Flagship show. This is it. This is where it all happens. All right. And you know what? Like I said, your boy DJ Premier is in town as well. We're about to go up and, and, and you know do our thing at Temple. So two pairs of tickets. DJ Premier tonight. Little Kim Tuesday. Remember who loves you, please. It's the drum. If you're confused about any of this, because like I said, I know all of you are goofy. If you're confused, you can always call the chef. He's happy to talk to you. 650-723-9010. And yes, we have artists in here. We have extremely grimy, dangerous artists in here. We will get to them in a minute. Stay where you are. Trust me, this is the greatest show on earth. It's the drum, baby. Tell your folks. Last time you heard this. We're at Temple exactly on time. How is that possible? 10.28. My set time is, uh, was 10.30. But he said he's gonna push it back a little bit, so. That's a beautiful thing. And he got his shit together when he came back out here. That's why that's how real hip hop is out here. For real. True. Prince Paul. Dell. Prince Paul. Oh, by the way, yeah, remember, wait, wait, wait. remember the conversation? That's some shit like I feel like if I had this like like one If I had the SK, I the fuck you coming over here? That shit got a little gate. You gotta, they gotta come to the gate and they gotta open the gate. Like 20 feet high, gated bars. Oh, yeah, my, my hotel room got you know, cigarettes, stains, and the fucking showers. It's just, just straight, just ghetto, lovely, like. Freestyle or a battle for that matter. My pockets stay fatter. You mess around with me, I bet your face shatter. One time for your mind, I get biz with this. Uh, one time for your mind, I'm nice with the rhyme. Remember that single called Check the Rhyme with me and my mini Q tip on Linden Boulevard? 
on the campus of Stanford. You know, I keep it walking, keep the talking like my man Johnny Dawkins, who once played with Duke. My name is Five Dog, I'm all about the loop. In Queens, you know, like KRS said, Queens keep on faking it, but we was doing everything but that. You know what I'm saying? And that just happened to be my favorite MC, by the way. Large Professor Akinelli. You know what I'm saying? We could go on for days when they talk about Queens MC. We went to the same private schools. And I'm like, come on, Tip, let's do us. So we started making up our own words. And it wasn't even about cadences and styles at the time for us. Um, played pop on the football, Little League baseball, basketball, all of that. And I was rhyming, and I basically told him, I'm like, yo, what's up? So that's how we really formed up our little crew. And um, once we got to high school, I went away to boarding school in Pennsylvania. You know what I'm saying? So that's how the Native Tongues came about. Latifah's involved, because she was rocking with Daylight off top, because they were label mates at Tommy Boy. So, boom. So, do the math. So, can you do the math? Do the math. <laughs> That is one of the many reasons it is so incredible. It's just an incredible show. That's not me being involved with it from the inception. That is just a bold statement of fact. It is objectively the greatest show on earth. The drum, KZSU stand. We had very similar taste in, in, uh, in rap music. And uh, you know, the, the friendship has endured for all these years, 24, 23 years later. And uh, props to the brother, man. I always big him up for having the longest running hip hop radio show in the world, not just in the US, in the world. So, uh, very tenacious personality and a good dude, man. Peace. Check it, yo, yo, when it comes to this mic device, you get eight, like the gingerbread man trying to cross the lake, or the Winchester, call my white boy, Lester Poindexter, bring back that black Mac, strap the two extra, clip whizzing at you, worms inside the apple, potholes in the street, crack my Jeep axle, triple your heart to a raisin, now you start gazing, so he got stupid and dunce, once he start blazing blunts, beef, it get drowned in hunts, nope, you can't score, you best to punt. Well, I do think, uh... I think I definitely walked away from hip hop for a minute, and um, I ain't gonna say I got no, I got no regrets. I got a song called No Regrets. I don't regret what I do, but at the same time, I realized that you know our absence from what we do and how we did it and the way we was marketing it, it uh, you know, it um, it slowed down hip hop from a from a from a um, from a creative perspective for for a minute. You know what I mean? It became more of a fun party, have a good time thing, which. I love having a good time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Chris is doing it tonight. Shut up to him, Cab. How's it going down tonight, man? It's at 10 15 Folsom. I say this too, y'all. I can say this with honesty. Because I listen to Lil Wayne's album, you know what I mean? And he just sold a million records in his first week, yo, which is incredible and beautiful. But at the same time, I think he got a balanced album. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? His album is not like one sided, you know what I mean? And so I'm kind of happy he did what he did because. That's gonna help bring back some balance. An MC, he's an MC. He's not just a guy from the south that got the beats and going on. He's putting time into what he's doing. He's saying things that's 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 connected and that's witty. I knew you appreciate that. <laughs> the is in the building. We're gonna talk to him. We're gonna play some records. Go to some things. Y'all gotta stay right here because you're lucky. You might get a chance to get up in the show yourself. And last time we talked, you supposed to bring me a woo rim. What we need to do is after we finish our events, find a location to connect and make it really crash. Um. But mostly, I, I still put my inspiration from the past, so, you know what I mean? I'm still, I'm still with my Curtis Mayfield, still with my Marvin Gaye. I just listened to um, uh, What's Going On album um, maybe like a couple of days ago, you know what I mean? And 
it's like I was like, man, yo, if I could ever make an album like this, where every song kind of was playing right back into each other, it was really the same rhythm through the whole album. And it just a, it was a masterpiece. So I'm still mostly inspired by by the old school brother. They got unproper natures, privately and publicly. Man, so stupid. When confronted by something he don't understand, he shoot it. The whole world's polluted. My earth gave birth to a universal changer. I'm like that child in the Bethlehem manger that would try to get my intellect, rob my culture. Like they whitewashing sculptures. <laughs> like they snatching down my posters, but it's been caught through the eyes of Minota. Zap, it's a booby trap. Can, can we take all the music out just for a hot second? 10, 15, 4, so. The RZA, AKA Bobby. <laughs> Crazy show, you will be mad at yourself if you miss it. Period. Whoosh. What are we looking at here? Yeah. I don't know. We're going to talk about the drum here. What is important is the drum. Much, 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 much more so than Kevin Cat. The drum. This is the radio show. Many, 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 many moons ago, concerned parties at Stanford University decided that there should be a certain block of programming dedicated on Sunday nights to work black target programming. Black black program. Say very simply that what we made it was a hip hop show. In every way, take a hip hop show. So to us, Sunday nights became hip hop. We can't. When I say us, I mean what became the members only group. Yo, Kevin Cat, what up? It's your boy, Rapper Noise. You already know QB's in the building. Let's go down in the bay, nigga. Do you hear me? You know, we out here in the bay, man. Your boy in a real John P. Straight from East Oakland. You know what time it is. manufacture whatever story it is you want. We live in, in that kind of a environment right now. We live in a multimedia environment that allows you to be able to, to uh, create stories and, you know, uh, wars, peace, and lies, truth, and all of that shit. You know what I'm saying? You can do whatever you want to do to get your point across. That's what I'm getting at. Harris, the Black Panther of Hip Hop. So, there are a bunch of hardheads out there who insist that hip hop has to be grimy, it has to be street, it has to be this, it has to be that. Not realizing that those of us that have been doing this since day one know better. Hip hop since day one has been party music. Now you can have grimy party music, but you can have to, you know, let's go out, shake our ass, and have a good time party music. There's nothing wrong with that. That is not to say that there aren't a bunch of other facets to hip hop as well. One of them became really, really, really popular 
with the advent of your public enemy type groups and your ex clan type groups and KRS One when he became, you know, the edutainment dawn. And then you have Paris, the Black Panther of hip hop, literally. I mean, when you put that in your name, you know where the cat's coming from. What I love about Paris is he definitely lives up to that. So, the same way that there's a lot of cats out there who. Here's a great Sean P illustration. Um, what do we got? We got five minutes before the hour. Eight, you got Paris, the Black Panther of hip hop. Here at KZSU Stanford, this is the drama. I want to invite each and every one of y'all to call. Give the man a call, see what he has to say to you one on one. You are more than welcome. 650 723 9010. I'm going to get to some more sounds. <coughs> Give this man a chance to reset. <laughs> and all the rest of the stuff I'm sure he has on his mind and he wants to get out there. And we will get at you. Again, 650-723-9010. It's the drum. KZSU Stamper. Stay where you are. I want to get you at least one more. With an open mind, looking at things as they are, you got still got horrible things going on, but no, no. so so applying applying the fact that the system does seem to be, and things do grind slowly, does seem to be moving along in at least some semblance of parity. But we don't know. You know does it make for, you for real it, change? Does to it come make about, <laughs> you know for real revolutionary change to come about? There has to be a degree of violence involved. It has to be. And people don't see, you know, a lot of people would, would argue with it and disagree, you know, but songs are, songs are not going to, I mean, songs provide the, uh, the catalyst to make people want to do things, you know, to me, you know, it's like this, the music that we make is like the background of revolution, you know what I'm saying? But it just in terms of, uh, of, you know, Paris records or Immortal Technique records or Public Enemy records or any of these cats that, that say the kind of things that we say, you know, um, making making a concrete difference i mean it's difficult to it's difficult to to connect the dots you know what i'm saying in the same way that protests making a concrete difference is difficult to connect the dots but i do know one thing i do know if if uh measurely came up missing or dead this conversation would be completely different cautious cautiously optimistic that things really okay all right because the political machine clearly, clearly is moving. I want to underscore that fact. You know, when I talk, when I when well, it trickles talk down about to it's situations like this. Random. It has to. You know, it is. It is. It, it right. is very uh, focused on the people who do the brutalizing. And I think that a lot of times people just automatically assume, oh man, we could never do that. We could never, you know, go up against the police. Or we, you know, we we are trapped in kind of in this in this fear mindset. We've been in a fear mindset for a long time. To convict this man of murder, of the charge that he's up for. Well, I don't know, that's a second degree murder, what's the official charge? I'm not sure, I believe it's, it's murder, I don't know if it's first, first, second, or third, but the, I think the thing is they can definitely convict him of something lower. They can even convict him of involuntary manslaughter, and the burden of proof for that is, is quite a bit lower, so. They are already doing fluff pieces to try to uh, color public opinion about the officer that shot Oscar Grant and try to make him seem as though he's, you know, kind of an everyman that made a mistake and, you know, he's uh, uh, has a, a newborn kid living in Lafayette and his parents got death threats and all that, you know, all this kind of stuff about how he was a student that everybody liked and, you know, they did this big thing in the SFA about it. This is a, this is a first the for someone, is, for a police officer to be in charge for yeah, murder. A first ever. That's big. You know, That's big. Things are things are changing. Uh, they are. Uh, things are changing. Officer. Now, I never tri I never tripped off the bar police before. Yeah. Honestly, I drive by them all fast on the road and they ain't got no respect for them. But you know, my outlook is a little different now because yeah, they sure. can kill you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, and you know, man, it's it's, it's not a, a talking tough kind of posturing thing. It's a common sense thing to me. It's a common sense, uh, the common sense of self defense. To me, if these same people, if people who live in, in the community, they know the same police that they see all the time. You know, people who who uh, have become accustomed to violence in the community, a lot of times are numb to it, and they don't feel like that there's any way out. There's any way to to, to you know, there's any light at the end of the tunnel, and. 
You know, that, that to me, uh, aside from, it's two completely separate conversations. One is the black on black conversation, which is completely out of control. The other one is the police, this police incident and you know instances of police brutality, which are eclipsed by the black on black violence, honestly. You know what I'm saying? So we do what we gotta do. We got a black president, the country's like several hundred years old. Do you, do you see any sort of positive change coming about in this country? If you would ask me, if we were having this conversation at this time last year, I would have been, there's no way in our lifetimes we will have a black president. And I hate coming back to that, but it just said, it does say a lot. That man being in office means a lot of people's minds have changed. The way a lot of people, not everybody, but the way a lot of people think have changed. And, and this is the point I really wanted to, to talk to you about, the system. The system seems to be changing in the way for the better. So, that's, the, he, he, he is, you know what it is? Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, you know, I mean, I make protest music too. My entire career is based on protest music. But, but, yeah. You supposed to lie to the cops, tell the truth in the booth, and said you tell the truth to the cops and lie in the booth. Fucking bad boy ass rappers get smacked with the gang cap. So what he's talking about is the gangster cats who are supposed to be gangster but only are in the booth. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of cats who do the same thing with the, the knowledge type of hip hop or the political type of hip hop, which is why somebody like Paris is, you know, so important to this game because behind the scenes he has been doing everything that he talks about on wax. So Paris is also one of those cats who brings intelligence to his lyrics in a way that remains accessible and that remains, you know, cool, grimy hip hop music. Nobody feels like being preached to. I don't care if it's in hip hop or country western or whatever. Nobody likes to feel like they're being preached to. So it's an accomplishment to be able to speak knowledge and avoid that stigma and make hot music that people honestly do want to listen to, you know, and then if they want to, they're pulling something out of it. If not, they're not in the heads, you know, it's just a win-win. So stats to Paris for being able to do that consistently over the years. Only Oruka Saki could make that happen. The only man in hip hop with hair bigger than Kev's. The, that's the only way it happened, okay? Wow. Tried to get him on stage today, he refused. We get to Keith Murray in the house. Say what? Yo, what up, Keith Murray? Guess what? I know you in your area. Word up. Yo, what up? Word up. Check out that new Keith Murray album. It stores down. Look at that. Produced by Eric Serving. What's the name of the album? Rapmophobia. Cast of characters changed very, very, very much a bunch of times over the years. The original cast of characters included Jay Brown, Rich D, DJ Easy Lou, DJ Mark Ski, and that Kevy Kev character. We had an East Coast affiliate, a cat myself and Rich D went to high school with in the Bronx. His name was Jack Frost, MC. But like I said, he was only in the East Coast. So he was down with members only, but not so much down with the drum. Kind of by osmosis. Yeah. That's the best we've been That's the best we
Hey yo, it's your boy with the bang, got some flex fame and all that, you know what I mean? Hey yo, let's talk about my nigga Cav, man, yo, he a real dude, you know what I mean? We had the pleasure of doing, uh, an example of him. Like I said, over the years we added a whole bunch of names to that. Some of the people that have been officially or unofficially part of that drum posse over the years, after that first nucleus of people were Fat Master Kurt, Sway, who you might see uh, doing big, big, big things these days. What up, Sway? Um, Buki D, MC Style. Toddy T, who was actually Mark Steed's younger brother, who came to Stanford on his coattails, and of course added in. Um, who else was a member? Oh, of course, we had your boy Mike Nice. Now, more than any other DJ that came through the drum, I got to pick up Mike Nice because he came in at a certain level as a DJ. He was nice when he came in, but by the time he left, he was ridiculous. So, Mike Nice gets big ups. And he was in there for a long time, too. This is your day. Make some motherfucking noise. When I say Shabby, you say Shab. Shabby. Shabby. When I say Shabby, you say Shab. Shabby. Shabby. I hope that I'm right there. I was a rap, bitch, you hear slap. Get on the top of the box, slap. Take me with the soul, top of the If you buy the line, blow your way. Before you fight, your body gets hot. This is a nice tie to the wake up show. You know, I will big up Sway and Tech. It's still family forever. A lot of people don't realize the wake up show started in its genesis as a bunch of MCs going to Tech's house every Tuesday, kicking rhymes, which Tech would then put a beat behind, take up the KML, and play on his Tuesday wake show. 
eventually, of course, KML realized what they had, you know. Yeah. Eventually, KML realized what they had, and they were like, yo, let's do a show. Let's do a hot hip hop show from soup to nuts. And every Friday night, boom, the wake up show was born. No way. Watch them. They were on Study, do your homework, man. Then do your homework. But I mean, there's a couple of things like this. How do you keep your ego in check? Because don't you want to get up there and flow and try sometimes? You know, maybe be like, man, let me hit that. You know, you know what, Nordy, I need you to go and shame. So every part of that is the song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, and they the best of what they do. We gotta come this from me. I hear that, man. What's up, man? Original legs and everything. That's right. Let me ask you a question, man. The best alcohol in the world, and where do you find the best weed? Is it Northern Cali, Southern Cali? Is it VSOP? Is it uh, Patron? I mean, for the people that are connoisseurs in those two fields. The best weed? The best weed. Where do you get that from? You get out my pocket, y'all. What's on? No, no, there's a big debate about Vancouver and Seattle versus. Show me style all day, you know what I'm saying? If you go overseas though, man, they got some shit out there, man. And what about the drink tip? Is it Patron up there now, or is it Hennessy, or what? I'm sponsored by a liquor company, so I can't say nothing to say. The drum is a radio show I've been doing for a long time. I've been doing this radio show 25 years. And just like the show today, that show is free, okay? The best things in life are free, and there's a reason I do it for free every week. It's Sunday night every week, 6 to 9 p.m., 90.1 FM. It's to connect you with them. I got a, I got a bunch of these, yo. Serious talk, I got a bunch of these in the house, and some of them are... My son is here. Some of these are bullshit. <laughs> Some of them people give you just because they hope they'll, you'll play their record. Some of them you worked hard to help make cats happen, and they did happen, and y'all love them, and you're proud of them. I'm proud of these cats, all right? For real. So, the last thing, not to get too preachy, the last thing, I, I know, I know, I know it's so easy to get free music these days, I know. I know there's a sense of entitlement, but support these cats, okay? Please, please, please. That's how they can continue. Whether it's Floss, Hand to Hand and CDs to you, or whether it's the Billions, whether it's the Rec League, all these cats out here today are making it happen because you support them. That's what all I'm trying to do is connect you with them, all right? And now I'm forgetting people because it's been 26 years and like I said, the cast of characters changed so many years. Anyway, uh, the drum has been a collective of people essentially since it started. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. When we raised, who won? Uh, <laughs> what song? The very first song? When it was me, you, and Kareem? Yeah. And we was running on the fucking ice? <laughs> huh? Well, shit, if I'm nice on ice, I'm nice anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah, yo, you, yo, you would have swore, right, swore you was Jesse Owens, B. Oh, you man. see these... 
these motherfuckers moving. All you gotta do is watch Lucini <laughs> and look who the fuck is in the dust. Alright? Directors is like, yo, slow up. You're leaving your man. I'm like, alright, alright, alright. You know what I mean? I'll try to calm it down a little I bit. I can't do nothing with them long ass boots on, bro. Right. This so, was. So. This shit was long. Snow, ice. This shit was long, Jones. I feel you. you know what but I, mean? I still smoked you in that shit. Still smoked that you was, in that But shit. that wasn't a race, my dude. Yes, it was. Let's talk yeah. about a race. Yes, it was. But we saying was the winner is the winner, B. I anyway. won. You. Beat your ass to that van. <laughs> If in my mind, from day one, this has been important to me, in my mind, that is what we're for. We are there to give those cats a voice. The ones that can't get a voice. No, I think it's not a, nice. it's not a better word for it, more mainstream outlets. So, that's what the drum is. It's your voice. It's the way we talk to you. It's the way we connect them with you. And you with them. You get what I'm saying.